Welcome to the lecture on exploratory data analysis. So, in this lecture we are going to explore more on the data that we were working on using frequency tables, two way tables followed by that we are also going to look at how to get the joint probability out of two way tables. We will also be looking at how to get marginal probability and conditional probability using two way tables. So, we will see in detail about each of the topics listed here. At last we are also going to look at a measure called correlation because all of the points which are listed above are to interpret or to check the relationship between categorical variables, but we will also have numerical variables in our data frame in which case we will also be looking at. So, in that case if you want to check the relationship between two numerical variables there is a measure called correlation that is what we are going to see in this lecture we will also be seeing in detail about what correlation measure is about. So, before exploring on the data we need to import the data into spider to work on that. So, prior to importing data we need to import the necessary libraries that are required for importing any data into spider. So, let us do that first. First we are importing the OS library. We use OS library to change the working directory. Next we will also be working with data frames because once we read any data into spider that becomes a data frame. So, to deal with data frames we need to load the library called pandas and we have imported it as pd because pd is just analyzed to the library called pandas. So, now we have imported the necessary libraries to change the working directory using the command os.chdir. chdir stands for changing directory and inside the command you can just give the path from which you are going to access the data from. Now, let us import the data into spider. So, we have a data set called toyota.csv which are nothing but the details of the cars. The details of the cars have been captured in terms of various attributes like price, age, kilometer, fuel type. You can look at the snippet below here. So, since this is a CSV data we need to use read underscore CSV command to read in CSV files and that is from the pandas library. So, that is why we have used pd dot read underscore csv and inside which we have just given the file name and we have set index underscore column as 0 just to make sure that we are setting the first column as our index column. Since we have already worked with this Toyota data we know that there are some missing values that are in the form of question marks. This question marks these question marks does not convey any message from the data or about the data. So, in that case we will be considering this as missing values, but here I have given it under any underscore values because I am going to consider these special strings with the default NAND values of python because python offers several functions which will allow us to deal with the default NAND values. In this case if I want to perform any operations by considering these missing values it will be a tedious process rather I can just consider these strings as default NAND values which also the representation of not available values. While reading itself we are considering all the question marks as NAND values so that we can perform all the operations that are related to missing values and the snippet given below will give you an idea about how the data will look like. Now, we have read the data into spider. We are going to create a copy of the original data so that whatever operations or modifications we are going to do on the data frame will not be reflected uh, in the same data set itself. Rather we can just have a copy of it so that we can cross verify with the original data at any point of analysis. So, in that case we are going to create a copy using the dot copy function preceded with the data frame name. So, here cars underscore data is the data frame name and using dot copy I am creating a copy of data and I am saving it into one new object called cars underscore data 2. So, cars underscore data 2 becomes my new data frame which was copied from the original data frame. Now, we can use this data frame to do the further analysis or to do further operations so that the original data will not be modified. So, now we are going to look how we are going to create a frequency table. Before creating we need to know what frequency table is about. We have multiple variables in our data frame and if you want to understand the data more you basically want to check the relationship that exists between the variables, but we cannot just check the relationship between 
uh, all the variables we can do one by one. For example, you can check the relationship between any categorical variables using cross tabulation or if you want to do univariate analysis on a categorical variable, you can also create a frequency table. So that you will know what is the frequency of each categories that are available under a variable. Now let us see how to create a frequency table. So cross tab is the function that comes from the pandas library which is used to compute a simple cross tabulation using one, two or more variables. By default it creates a frequency table of the factors. So now let us see how to create a frequency table. So I have used pd.crosstab that is the function that is used to create a frequency table and as an input to the function I have used it as index is equal to cars 2 of fuel type that means that I am interested in getting the frequencies of the categories that are available under the variable fuel type and we know that that is from the data frame cars data 2 and the variable of interest should be given under the parameter called index. We also need to have the corresponding frequencies of it so basically it gives you the count for each categories of fuel type and since we know that we have so many missing values in our data frame, we do not want to consider that while we are interpreting from the frequency table. In that case you can drop all those missing values by setting drop na is equal to true. By setting that you will get rid of all the records wherever there are missing values. So you will get the frequencies for each categories for the records where there are no missing values. By setting drop na is equal to true, if you look at the original data size and uh, the data size after dropping NA and values you will get an idea about how many records we have lost. So the original data size is about 1436 rows and after dropping the missing values we are left out with only 1336 rows because there were 100 records where the fuel type were missing that is why we are left out with only 1336 records. Now we are going to create the frequency table by considering only 1336 records. So now let us see how the output would look like. So if you see here you have the variable here and you have the corresponding categories under the variable fuel type. So basically there are three categories under the variable fuel type CNG, petrol and diesel and you can also look at the corresponding frequencies of each of it. So it is very evident from the output there are only 15 cars whose fuel type is of CNG and there are 144 records or 144 cars have the fuel type as diesel and if you see here petrol has the frequency as 1177 so in this case most of the cars have petrol type as fuel type because there are only few cars whose fuel type is are of CNG and diesel. So in this case you will have an idea about though there are so many categories that are available under fuel type most of the cars fuel type are of petrol. So in the previous example we have considered only one categorical variable just to get the frequency distribution of each categories. Now we can also have one more variable to check the relationship between those two categorical variables. If you want to check the relationship between two categorical variables you can go for two way tables and here we are going to use the same function to create a two way table and in this example we are going to look at the frequency distribution of gearbox types with respect to different fuel types of the car. In the previous example we have just looked at the frequency distribution of fuel type but here we are going to look at the frequency distribution of gearbox with respect to the different fuel types of the car. So let us see how to do that. And if you want to know more about gearbox types that are available for the data set that we have, here is a snippet. So gearbox types have been represented using a variable called automatic. It has two values, zeros and ones and zero is the representation of the car having a manual gearbox and one is the representation of the car having an automatic gearbox. Now let us see how to create a two way table using cross tab function. So the function remains the same that is pd.crosstab. The first parameter that goes into the function is index. Under that I have just specified the variable as automatic. So under the index variable I have specified the variable as automatic and under the columns you can specify one more variable. 
that is fuel type because we want to look at the frequency distribution of gearbox type with respect to different fuel types of the car. And I am also going to remove all the missing values from the data frame. So, by setting n is equal to true you mean that it will consider the two way table will be created by considering only the rows where both automatic and fuel type are found. That is there should be no missing values in both automatic and fuel type. In that case only it will create a frequency table because if you have a missing value under a automatic column and if you have a filled value under the fuel type column it would not be able to get the count of it rather it will just omit that particular row itself and you will be left out with the rows where there are no missing values in both automatic and fuel type column. So, now let us look at the output to check the relationship between those two variables. So, since I have just since I have given automatic under the index argument and fuel type under the columns argument the output is a representation where rows corresponds to automatic and columns corresponds to fuel type. So, from the output it is very evident that so now let us see how to interpret the output. So, if you see 15 here so you can see the so you can see the value 15 here that means that there are only 15 records where the fuel type is of CNG and the car has a manual gearbox and there are only 144 records where the fuel type of the car is diesel and also the car is having a manual gearbox. And the interesting thing and the interesting thing about the output is you can see some zeros here that means that the cars with automatic gearbox does not have the fuel type of either CNG or diesel. If the car is of automatic gearbox then it has only the fuel type as petrol. So, no cars have the fuel type as CNG or diesel given the gearbox is of automatic. So, this is very interesting about the relationship between automatic and fuel type. So, now this gave us the idea about what is the relationship that exists between the automatic and fuel type variables. So, we have looked at the output in terms of numbers. There is also a way where you can convert the table values in terms of proportion and that is what we mean by joint probability. By converting the table values from numbers to proportion you will get a joint probability values. You will get the joint probability values that is also using the same function cross tab. Let us see how to do that. We are going to use the same function cross tab to arrive at the joint probability values. What do you mean by joint probability first? Joint probability is the likelihood of two events. So, joint probability is the likelihood of two independent events happening at the same time. So, if you have two independent events happening at the same time, what is the probability of it? That is what the joint probability gives you. Let us see how to do that. The, all the other code remains the same, but you just need to add one more parameter called normalize is equal to true. If you set normalize is equal to true, you are basically converting all the table values from numbers to proportion that is what normalize means. Now, let us see how the output will look like. So, you have the same table here, but the values have been converted from numbers to proportions. You can interpret the output like the joint probability of the car having a manual gearbox and having the fuel type as CNG is only 0 0.01. But if you look at a value here that is 0 0.82 that represents that the joint probability of the car having a manual gearbox and the fuel type is also petrol. The probability is really high there and if you see here there is no probability that you will get a car with an automatic gearbox as well as with the fuel type CNG or diesel. But all these are from the data that we have read now. So, all these are interpretation that we have made are based on the data that we have now. There can be cases where the interpretations can be different with respect to different sets of records. Now, we are going to look at how to get the marginal probability using the two way table. We are going to use the same function, but by just tweaking or by just adding one more parameters we will be able to arrive at different types of probability values. So, here we are going to look at marginal probability. So, marginal probability is the probability of the occurrence of the single event. It will consider only the occurrence of a, a single event alone. So, here is the code for that. We have used the same pd.crosstab function. So, here index 
and columns parameters remains the same and we have used drop n is equal to true and normalize is equal to true because we want all the table values in terms of proportions or the probability values. And I have also set margins is equal to true in order to get the marginal probability value. By setting margins is equal to true, you are basically going to get the row sums and the column sums for your table values. Let us see how the output will look like. So, here is the output. In the previous example, you would have got till here, you did not get the row sum and the column sum of it. But by setting margins is equal to true, you will get the row sums and the column sums as well in the name of all. What does we mean by marginal probability? The highlighted values are nothing but the marginal probability values and how do we interpret these values? So, if you take the first value that is 0 0.946895. So, now how can you interpret from the value 0.94? Because the 0.94 value is nothing but the probability of cars having manual gearbox when the fuel type is of either CNG or diesel or petrol. You can infer the 0.88 value as the probability of the car having a fuel type as petrol and when the gearbox type is of either automatic or manual. So, this is what you can get and if you sum up everything, the total probability value will be 1. Now, let us move on to get the conditional probability using the two-way table. So, here also we are going to use the same function that is pandas dot cross tab and let us see what conditional probability is about. So, conditional probability is the probability of an event A given that another event B has already occurred. For example, if you want to get the probability of an event A by considering another event has already occurred, then you call it as a conditional probability. And now, what is the example that we are going to look using conditional probability is that given the type of gearbox, what is the probability of different fuel type. So, let us see how to get that, but if you see here the first four parameters remains the same. We have just tweaked the normalized parameter from, uh, we have just tweaked the normalized parameter. We have initially said that as true, but we are changing it to index just to get the conditional probability values. So, now we are going to look at the output to get the inferences. So, if you see here, this is a cross tabulation of automatic and uh, fuel type variable and all the table values are in terms of probability values. Since we have set normalized is equal to index, you will get the row sum as 1 because that is what we mean by the conditional probability. So, given the gearbox type is of manual, the probability of getting a CNG fuel type is 0 0.01 and the probability of getting a diesel fuel type is 0 0.11 and the probability of getting fuel type as petrol is really high when compared to the other fuel types. So, this gives you an idea about for any manual gearbox, petrol can be the fuel type because at the max we are getting the probability is for petrol. So, th there is a really high probability value that you can get. So, from the high probability value, you can say that. So, from high probability value of 0.87, you can say that for any car which are of manual gearbox, the probability is really high for having a petrol type for f having a fuel type as petrol. And similarly, you can see here there is no probability that you can get because there is no probability value that you can get for CNG and diesel because the property is 0 and the property is 1 for petrol because for all the automatic gearbox cars, the fuel type is only petrol. This we know that from the previous examples as well. So, this is how we get the conditional probability. Here we have got the row sum to 1, we can also get the column sum to 1. In that case, you will be looking at the cross table in terms of given the type of fuel being used for the car. So, given the type of fuel, you will get the probability of different gearbox types. So, let us see how to get that. So, we are going to use a cross tab function to arrive at a conditional probability. So, I have initially set normalized is equal to index, but here I am changing it to columns just to get the column sums as 1, but all other parameters remains the same. Now, let us 
try to interpret from the output. So, given the fuel type of the car is CNG, what is the property of the car having a manual gearbox? It is 1. So, in this case there is 0 because we know that there are no uh, automatic gearbox which are of CNG or diesel fuel type. But the probability of getting a car given that the fuel type is petrol and the car has also manual gearbox is 0 0.93. So, now we have seen how to get the conditional probability by considering the two variables because we have also set the normalized parameter as columns and we have also seen how to set the normalized is equal to index and we have also seen how to interpret those results. Next we are going to look at correlation because till now we have been looking at to check the relationship between two categorical variables using cross tabulation. Now we are going to look at how to check the relationship between two numerical variables using a measure called correlation. And what is correlation? Correlation is just to check the strength of association between two numerical variables and it need not be always numerical variables, but in this case or in this lecture we are going to look at the correlation for numerical variables. We are going to look at a visual representation of correlation using scatter plots. So, if you see here the first plot says positive trend because as one variable increases the other variable is also increasing. For example, as your weight of the car increases the price might go up. In that case you call it as a positive trend when you see the points are scattered. In this case and there is another plot that you can see here is little or no correlation because there is no pattern that you can find out from this scatter plot here. Rather all the points have been scattered all over. In that case you can say that there is no correlation between those two variables at all. Theoretically or numerically if you want to interpret from the correlation measure then the correlation values bounded between minus 1 and plus 1 and uh, closer to 1 in either ends is the represent the higher correlation it can be either a negative or positive sign because the correlation can be there can be high correlation negatively and there can be high correlation positively. If you want to interpret from the correlation measure in terms of numbers then the correlation value will be bounded between minus 1 to plus 1, 0 represents there is no correlation at all between any two numerical variables and closer to 1 represents there is a strong correlation between two variables positively. Theoretically above 0.7 you can say there is a fair correlation between two numerical variables. If you can take it to the other side of it 0 to minus 1 then closer to minus 1 will give you high negative correlation like this whenever the age of the car increases the price will always decrease because for the newer aged car the price will always be really high. In that case there can be a strong negative relationship between those two variables so the value will be closer to minus 1. So now we have got an idea about what correlation measure is about and how we can interpret visually and how we can interpret numerically. So now we are going to see how to get the correlation using python. CORR is the function that is used to calculate correlation between any variables that you can use that for a data frame because by using the dot cor function we are going to compute the pairwise correlation of columns by excluding all the null values here because we are not just going to consider only two variables rather we are going to consider all the variables at a time and the function computes the pairwise correlation. We will see what pairwise correlation is when we get the output. But this function is used to get the pairwise correlation of columns and by default it excludes all the missing values from the data frame and then it calculates the correlation value. And the method I have specified here is Pearson because by default it calculates the Pearson correlation and Pearson correlation is also used for to check the strength of association between two numerical variables. If you have ordinal variables then you can go for other measures as Kendall rank correlation and Spearman rank correlation. So in that case we need to exclude the categorical variables to find the Pearson correlation. Now let us see how to exclude those variables which are of categorical data type. So here 
cars underscore data to is the data frame that I am working on. From that data frame, I am going to select only the columns which are of numerical data type. Since I am just going to exclude only categorical variables, I have given object under exclude. I have saved that to a new data frame called numerical data. So, let us see what would be the dimension of it by checking what is the number of variables that are available under numerical data. If you see, if you print and see the shape of it, you can look, you can see that there are 1436 observation with 8 variables. Initially, we had 10, we, have le we are left out with only 8 variables now, which are of numerical data type. So, now let us see how to create the correlation matrix. So, we are going to look at the correlation between numerical variables using the command dot car and the data frame that I am applying it to is the numerical data and I am saving this input to an output called car, mat car matrix. Now, we are going to calculate the correlation from the data frame that we have now using the function dot car. Here, the interest is to find the correlation between the numerical variables and the data frame that we are applying it here is numerical data because that is where we have all the columns as numbers. And we are also saving the output to an object called cor underscore matrix, so that that will have the output of the correlation matrix. So, now let us look at the output and try to interpret the correlation values. So, this is a snippet that is taken from the variable explorer and if you see here the index represents the variable names, the variables in separate columns. So, if you look at the principal diagonal which are marked in purple color, all are of 1 because the correlation between price and price would be 1 because the relationship is being checked against that variable itself that is why you are getting the value as 1. But if you see the value minus 0 0.87 that represents that there is a negative correlation between price and age since there is a negative symbol over there and the correlation is about 0.5 that means that the correlation there is a strong negative correlation between age and price. Whenever the age of the car increases the price is decreasing that applies same to the kilometer. Though the correlation value is slightly lesser than kilometer it has 0.5 which is 0.57 which is equivalent to 0.6. It also have a fair negative correlation between kilometer and price whenever the car has traveled a lot the price will automatically go down. For a newer car and for the cars which, which have traveled really less, in that case the price is always really high. And uh, if you look at 0.58, as the weight of the car increases, the price is also increasing. That is why there is a positive correlation value here that is 0.58. You can also look at the relationship between kilometer and age. There is a fair relationship positive relationship between kilometer and age because the value is 0.5 as the age of the car increases the kilometer is already increased. Similarly, you can interpret from different values of different variables and here we have used the Pearson correlation. If you want to look out for other correlation measures, you can specify that under the method argument. So, now we have come to the end of the session. So, let us summarize whatever we have seen it in this lecture. We have started with creating frequency tables to check what is the frequency of each categories in a categorical variable and then we were interested in looking at the relationship between two categorical variables using a two way tables. And then we have also seen how to convert the two way table into joint probabilities, marginal probability and conditional probability. And we have also seen how to check the relationship between two numerical variables using a measure called correlation. Thank you.